In this video, we will implement in code the algorithm that we came up with to solve our combinations of a string problem. So if you remember, this was the recursive algorithm we came up with, and now we will implement it in code. I'm using Eclipse as my IDE to solve this problem, and I called my class stringlib for a string library because we will be handling a string. The only requirement that was specified to us in the challenge statement was that the method signature was like so. So it didn't have to return anything, it was called combine, and it took a string as the argument. This is the string basically whose combinations we will be printing out. So this, is, this was the only specification, and uh, the first thing I do here is basically I'm going to write a main method which we'll call combine, giving it the appropriate string so that uh, combine basically displays all the combinations. So public, static, void, main, string, args, conventional way of defining the main method. And what I will do is call combine, passing it a string. We've been using ABC as an example, so I'll just keep it as so, and we could change that later. And uh, since uh, I'm calling combine from a static method, I'm just going to have to add the static modifier right here. So now we have a framework that works. All we have to do is flesh out the details of combine. We have to do it, of course, according to our algorithm. Now, if you go back to our algorithm, you will notice that we are using a buffer here. And if you remember from our recursion vi video, when we talked about using a buffer or any data structure within the a recursive uh, method or function, then this data structure or buffer would have to be initialized uh, before the start of this recursive method. It will have to be initialized in a wrapper method, what we call a wrapper method. So this wrapper method does anything that has to be done in the beginning before it calls the recursive method, which will call itself over and over again. So then what we realize here is that we need an extra method. This method will be used to perform the initializations, whatever is required, and then it will call another method that I will call combinations, or combination, and this one will be my recursive method, and we'll uh, flesh out its details in a second. So what do we need to exactly do at the beginning of combine? Well, one of the things that I need to do here, some initial initializations, is basically get the length of the string. Because I will be using the length of the string over and over again in my solution, let me compute it once and use it and pass it to all, any method that needs it. So I'm just going to say length here, and I'm going to obtain the length of the string. So this length variable will be used over and over again in my solution. And then the next thing I do, of course, is uh, create my string buffer. This will be the buffer which will hold the output or the combinations which we will be printing out. So string buffer, and I'll call it output. And I'll say new string buffer. And I will make it as large as the string itself. And that way, because I know that, sorry, I need an E here. I know that uh, the output, or the combination that I'm printing out, will never be larger than the string itself. And then, now that I have my output buffer, I have the length, I pretty much did all the initializ initializations that I needed, so I can go on and call my combination method. The combination method will be this recursive algorithm. So, I've done my initializations, now I could call the recursive function or method and I will be passing it some information which we will explain in a second. So let's come to the combination method. This is essentially the implementation of the algorithm that we devised earlier. So what does it have to return? Nothing. It just needs to print out certain things, some information. And uh, so this is going to be where I put my details for combination. Now what do we have to pass this method? This method is going to perform everything we had defined here. So of course I need to pass it the string itself because we need to pull out some characters from that string so that we could print them out or put them in a buffer. So let me go right back here. I will pass it string str. This will be the string itself. And what else do I need to pass it? I'll pass it the length, the length of the string. I don't need to compute it over and over again. I'll just pass it to that method and it's going to call itself recursively and every time it does that it will pass the, the, the length variable which it will be using uh, in, the, uh, in the code here. So let me pass int length. What else does it need? It will also need of course the buffer itself which it will be filling out with characters 
printing them out and then going on to some other recursive uh, uh, calls so string buffer output and then finally what I'm going to do is uh, remember we talked about allowed characters we said that for each character in allowed characters we will be performing some actions how are we going to determine allowed characters what we could do is basically pass a set of characters in an array or whatever to the combination method or to this algorithm and it will work based on these allowed characters what I'm instead going to do is basically just pass a an integer which will point to the first character that we could add or that is allowed in the in the in the call to that method so if, if allowed start I'm gonna call my uh, index allowed start if it points to B here then the allowed characters will essentially be in a string B and C so for example remember we said that if I added a to my output buffer then what are the characters that I could add after it it's only B and C I can't add A anymore or if I added say B I could not add A I could only add C remember we said only the characters that come after in the actual string could be added to are the allowed characters so what I'm going to do is I will define this by an integer which will be or a pointer which will be pointing to the first allowed character and we will just have to sweep to the end of the string itself to get all the allowed characters so I'm going to define allowed characters by an integer so let me do that here I'm going to say int allowed start so this defines the start of my set of allowed characters now let me uh, define or, or pass the actual uh, variables that are needed for the combination method now that I'm done with anything that I need to pass to the combination method so what will I have to pass here I'm passing the string itself I'm passing the length I'm passing the output buffer that I created up here and finally for allowed start what do I pass at the beginning well all the characters are allowed so I want allowed start to point right here at the very beginning of the string so zero so that I define all the characters as being part uh, part of the allowed character set so I'm just going to pass zero here and uh, since I'm calling combination from a static method I'm just gonna have to put the static uh, mod modifier here so now I have my combination method which is the recursive method I have my combine method which is the wrapper method and I have my main method which calls combine combine calls my recursive method now let's go on and write the code that goes inside combination and all I'm going to do here is basically just translate my algorithm into code so this algorithm I'll take it and literally put it into code this is my base case let me actually put it into code so if, if there are no allowed characters if we've reached the end of the string I'm going to return how am I going to determine that there are no allowed characters well basically allowed start will be pointing to the very end if allowed start points here then that means there are no allowed characters if it points to C then that means C is the only allowed character if it points to B then that means B and C are allowed right but if allowed start points right here that is the length of the string then uh, there are no allowed characters so this is exactly what I'm going to do I will ask the question if allowed start equals length what I'm going to do is simply return this is my base case else this is where I handle the recursive case so we go back to our method what do we need to do for each character in allowed character so we're going to have a for loop I will do the following actions so I need a, to add a character to that buffer the character that I determined here and the allowed characters add it to the buffer print the buffer and then call combine again call combination again so let's start with this for so for I will have a current integer that will basically sweep over the characters that are allowed so current will be pointing first to the the first allowed start and then it will go on to all the other characters that are allowed so it'll start right here where allowed start is pointing at and then it will move on to all the other allowed characters so it will basically perform this for loop for us uh, you could have used I if you wanted to make it simpler but I'm just using current here just to symbolize that we're actually pointing at that particular character which is our current character that we're considering so current will first point to allowed start and then what it what it's going to do is it's just going to increment current every time right and then my condition for this to end is when current becomes equals equal to length when current becomes equal to length and that means that we've covered all the allowed characters and that means we started here at allowed start we kept on incrementing current 
until it stopped right here. So I covered B and C, which were part of the allowed characters. So this is my for loop, which does this. Now I'm going to add the character which I'm considering, current, to the buffer, and I'm going to print out the buffer. So let me do that here. This is my for loop. Uh, we said first I need to add, so I'm going to append to my output, the character that I'm considering at that particular point. So string char at, sorry, and I will specify the index current. So what I'm saying here, I want the character within that string that is uh, at index current. And I will append it to the buffer output. Then I will print out the buffer, so system.out.println, and I put output here. I printed it out. What do I do next? I call combination, our recursive method, if you remember from the algorithm. I call combination recursively, and what do I pass it? I need to pass it all this information here. So string length output. Now you notice that output, we actually modified it. It has a new character within it and allowed, allowed start. So what it will allow start be this time? Allow start will, now that I've actually added this character, or whatever current was pointing at, so maybe current would be pointing right here, right? Current would be sweeping over the allowed character, so it would start B, add it to the buffer, and then move on, call the combination, remove it from the buffer, go on to the next character, add it to the buffer, and so on and so forth. So suppose current was pointing here, what will be the allowed characters? The allowed characters will be whatever comes after it, so current plus one. If current was pointing here and I added this character to the buffer, what is allowed to be added to the buffer after that? Whatever comes after it, so current plus one. And this is exactly what I'm going to do here. So current plus one. I'm calling my combination, the recursive method, according to the algorithm, so given the buffer, the new state of the buffer, over the next allowed characters. And I'm defining the allowed characters by allowed start making it equal to current plus one. Current will be sweeping over all the allowed characters and whatever character it adds to the buffer here, well the next allowed characters will be whatever come after it in the actual string, so current plus one. And then after I did this call I will remove that character that I just added from the buffer. So after it's been processed by this call, which will maybe perform more and more recursive calls, it comes back out here, I will remove the character that I just added from the buffer. The way I'll do this is as follows. So output, uh, delete character at, and the index will basically be output dot length. So I want to target the very last character that I added to the output, minus one. So this will give me the last character that I just added to the buffer output, and it will basically delete it. It will remove it. This is the character that I just added here. So added that character, I printed out the state, the new state of the buffer, I called combination, sending it a new set of allowed characters, and then once I did that combination, it maybe performs, it maybe prints out, I don't know how many uh, combinations within this call, it maybe performs even more and more calls until it reaches the base case and it starts working its way all the way up, comes back here, I'm done with that character that I just added, I got all of its combinations, I delete it, and then move on to the next character in the allowed in the allowed characters. So this is it. This should do it. So let's see if this actually works. I will run my work here, and we notice from the console right here that I get all my combinations for a a for a b c. Uh, let's try it out for a different string. Say a b c d. Save it. Run. Let's see what we get here, and we get all the possibilities, all the combinations for the string A, B, C, D. You see how it works? It starts with A, it finishes with A, all the A's, goes to B, and then it finishes with C, and then finally D. One last thing I should mention is that we could actually do away with this base case and replace it by an equivalent if statement just before the call to this method once more, to this recursive method. So if I can find the equivalent of this if and predict it right here and make the call uh, and then only make the call if this I am sure that it would evaluate to false because if it evaluates to true what I'm basically doing is uh, storing state onto the stack and then 
calling combination coming right here and then realizing that I don't really have to execute anything just return and I would return so I'd have to pop it off the stack and then restore state and then carry on my execution from where I was why do all this if I could just predict from right here if I really have to perform this recursive call if I don't really need it if I know it's going to evaluate to true here then I could just skip it I could skip that and go right to this step so what I need to do is find the equivalent of this if statement and place it right here so uh, allowed start is coming to us from this variable right here at the very end of the past variables to combination and this is basically current plus one right so I will replace this by current plus one I'm just gonna put the if here if current plus one is equal to length so I know that if this evaluates the true then it will return so if this evaluates the true I should never make this call so this is the equivalent we said if this revalues is true I should not make that call so I only make the call if this evaluates the false and this means that this is a, this will actually come right here and perform this recursion recursion instead of going for the base case so I will only make the call to combination if this evaluates to true that is current plus one is not equal to length that means it's not the base case and then I could remove all of this I don't need that anymore and this actually has a name, this style of recursion is called arm's length recursion because you're doing away with the uh, base case and it's saving you some recursive calls. And let's see if it still works. And we see right here that we get the, all the combinations for ABCD just like we had before.